Hey, it's Scott Carlos at Stansberry Research. I'm here at the 2018 Alliance Conference in Las Vegas. I'm here with the Wall Street legend and founder and editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer, Jim Grant. Hey, Scott. Jim, thanks for being here. You're entirely welcome. Uh, your presentation, I loved it. I think everything you're talking about is what people really need to be focusing on right now. What's going on with interest rates and, and global politics is very important. Yeah, well, uh, if you're an interest rate observer, Scott, this is a fabulous uh, time because uh, they're actually now visible for the first time in many years. Very fair. Yeah. Very fair. Um, so let's start with some things that happened today. Uh, Jerome Powell, Charles Evans, Patrick Harker, Loretta Mester, all Fed governors for anybody that, that isn't quite sure. Um, they were all optimistic on economic growth. Your thoughts? Well, for one thing, they, they kind of have to be. Um, they are, uh, they can't, they, you never heard one of them come out and say, you know, um, things are looking really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I suspect they might be right. I mean, certainly the economy looks fine, uh, but what is, to me, most remarkable about the economy is the, uh, uh, is the uh, uh, conjunction of very, very low interest rates in this boom and the prospect of a trillion dollar treasury deficit in this boom. You don't really see that in month 112 of a major business expansion. But uh, you know, it's, it's the White House, White House itself that's projecting this trillion dollar deficit. It's, it's kind of amazing, right? Yeah. It, it's, you know, it, what scares me too, and, and uh, you know, there a lot of people are con concerned about this, Joe, is the debt refinancing that has to happen in, in the next couple of years in corporate America. And the, the Fed is on this crazy path. We, growth is really picking up. And when these companies go to refinance all their debt, it, it could be really scary. They, some people just might not be able to get. Well, that is, that is I suppose that's true. Uh, companies have uh, availed themselves of, uh, of uh, truly uh, of unique interest rates. Nothing like this has been seen in some respects ever. Um, Mostly these so-called uh, maturity cliffs don't really come to much, but uh, when rates have been this low for this long and companies uh, have borrowed heavily at them and now must recalibrate their finances to accommodate higher rates, there could be, could be some trouble, yeah. Yeah. Uh, does the political angst in Italy concern you? And, and what's going on there right now with the, the standoff with the EU in terms of their, uh, their budget deficit? Well, Italy uh, would like to assert its national sovereignty against the EU. And to that end, it is uh, uh, proposing uh, a budget that will be heavily in deficit and that is likely to trip the EU's uh, uh, criteria for excessive deficit finance. Um, now, uh, what this has threatened in the past is to rupture the EU. And the evidence of the market's concern has always been a rally in the Swiss franc. And what is notable today is the Swiss franc is not responding. The Swiss franc is as, as cool as a cucumber. So uh, the drama in, um, in Italy with respect to its budget, with respect to the EU, is a little bit like a professional wrestling match. And the, the, you know, the, it's scripted. And uh, uh, Brussels uh, says its piece not to inflame. And Italy says its piece to inflame. And uh, so far, it's, 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 uh, it's theatrical, but there is the risk that Italy, which, as you know, has got as a major debtor, uh, yeah. and it's borrowing still at rates, although spread wide over the German Bund, rates that are very nominally very, very low. I mean, they, I'm not sure you're getting paid for the risk. So if, if Italian rates go way up, uh, that could uh, reopen doubts about the euro, uh, but nothing like that so far. It's interesting. I don't think people fully appreciate the fact that Italy is the third biggest economy in the European Union, and you know, they have the second highest uh, debt ratio behind Greece. And as much as Greece ruled the markets years ago, um, Greece's economy is nowhere close to what Italy's is. Yeah, no, Italy is a, is a major, it's a major force in the debt market certainly. Yeah. And the uh, you know the European Central Bank has been buying this stuff, and now the. Uh, Italy would like the European Central Bank to buy rather more of it. And the European Central Bank is saying, well, why don't you issue less of it? <laughs> but it's like a, the, uh, the discussion between Italy and Brussels reminds me a little bit of um, the social warnings they give out in, the, in, in, in schools. Is they don't actually suspend because they give them a social warning. So Brussels is giving Rome a social warning not to do what it's doing. So for now, at least, the, the crisis is latent rather than, than out in the open. Well, let's hope it stays that way. 
Well, I don't know. I, I, as a journalist, I kind of like the drama. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a longtime student of debt. Is oh, yes, very long. Is, is there a debt problem now, and what is it? Well, there is. Uh, although the debt problem now seems like a, a very happy thing because companies can fund themselves at, uh, at very, very, uh, on very easy terms at very low rates for a very long time. But I think that the emerging debt problem is one in corporate America. And uh, you can see it, uh, well, it's better to talk about it in uh, actual examples. AT&T, the old AAA Ma Bell, is now a weak investment grade borrower. Uh, it is uh, on the acquisition trail, of course, and uh, uh, its debt load uh, now uh, is uh, 250 billion or so, of which 180 billion trades, and it is right at the threshold of speculative grade. Now, if AT&T were to be downgraded, were to be downgraded, the, jet, the junk market would get a whole lot of supply all at once. So that is one possible source of difficulty. Another is the uh, uh, proliferation of. Uh, of uh, the bank debt called leveraged loans, which are tradable bank loans, and which have been degraded in credit quality and in uh, the quality of the fine print uh, for the better part of 10 years now, and promises to be a much less reliable source of income for savers in the next recession than it was in 2008. In 2008, these loans did very well. Uh, they promised to do less well the next time because they're much weaker. That's the Scary. Well, so this stuff happens, Scott. It's, yeah. just, it's just the world turning. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, you also mentioned in your speech, uh, there's potential we could be in the beginning stages of a 35-year bear market in bonds. Well, th th there is a, a pure historical coincidence in that the, uh, the great bear market in bonds of yesteryear, 1946 to 81, was 35 years, and the succeeding bull market, 1981, to dot, 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 perhaps was 35 years because uh, it perhaps ended in July of 2016. That would be 35 years. Um, now, uh, there is nothing in the least bit scientific about this proposition. That these, but there is an observational point that uh, for 200 years, interest rates have tended to trend in very long-term generation length cycles. Uh, they may or may not continue to do so. If they were to continue to do so, and if this were the beginning of a long bear market, we would see rates go a lot higher, not all the time, but persistently over the years. And uh, so, so uh, already rates have more than doubled from the bottom in 2016, so we're kind of off to a, uh, a vigorous start. It, it would scare me what that pretends for the housing market. Well, it's, it, it, is, it is not going to be good for young people seeking a mortgage, true. Uh, but for those who save, it could be a very refreshing thing. You have not been, you know, if you're a creditor in America, you are getting the following. You are getting, uh, uh, and, and up until just the other day, other moment, you were getting a two point something yield on a 10 year treasury when the rate of inflation was about two point something. So you're getting no real return before tax on government securities, uh, you have been getting very little, I think, for the credit risk in speculative grade corporate debt and almost nothing at the bank. So all of a sudden, you know, Jeff Bezos gives his employees a raise. That's nice. How about, how about the creditor class gets a raise? <laughs> it would be pretty great. Yeah. yeah. Would make too much sense, too. Yeah, well, you, you change. Yes, yes, you do. Um, and, and then lastly, what would be your single most important piece of advice for investors? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, this is kind of a secret, but... Um, okay. Uh, Do you just want to whisper uh, away? Well, buy low, <laughs> buy low is a... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 uh, one thing they might think about, Scott, is, um, is to at least to entertain the possibility that this is a new era of rising interest rates. 35 years... You have to have uh, at least one or two gray hairs to recall when rates were going up. And it's going to take a big mental adjustment on the part of investors. So at least I would try the, uh, the mental acrobatics of imagining a time of rising rates. So for example, uh, you might look at insurance stocks that are the net beneficiaries of higher yields. Uh, W.R. Berkeley, for example, W.R.B., we've taken interest in this stock. Um, it's done very well in the past six months because of rising short-term interest rates. 
Uh, so there are there are a whole there are whole classes of investments that have done relatively badly in the era of falling and negligible rates uh, that perhaps are poised to do better if this is indeed the time of rising rates. And I believe me, Scott, I've, I've blown out many too many birthday candles to be dogmatic about anything in markets. <laughs> but enough. if this if this were a if this were the beginning of a new cycle of rising rates, it would be a very big deal. And at least I think I think the the possibilities are strong enough that people ought to start thinking about it seriously and imagining how it might play out and reorienting their approach to income. Yeah, and, and again, just, people need to understand too, don't rush into it, ease your way in. Maybe, maybe if you're looking at something like that, buy a little bit now, see how it goes. Then wait till it goes down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Jim, my pleasure. You're welcome, Scott. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to press that like button. Comment down below, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, please. And remember to click that bell to be sure you don't miss out on our newest updates. Stay tuned for more updates from our Vegas conference.